So let us first uh, run Inkscape. I'll be creating a new document here. Let me first zoom into the canvas and I'll be showing the reference diagram of the perceptron from the perceptron on the screen and I actually have it on the other monitor so I'll be using that as a reference. First we'll start by drawing the circle. I'll use the circle tool and draw it here. Hold the control key to get a perfect circle. I think this size is fine and I'll move it towards the center. Now the next challenge would be to get the correct colors that we have in the diagram. For that, uh, first uh, I need to select the shape and then uh, we have the fill and the stroke. Now as the color that I want is not available here, I'll double click at this location and get this dialog appearing here. Now for the fill, I'll click here and I have the HSV colors, uh, color wheel selected here but you can use RGB if you want. I think for this one I'll be using RGB. Okay so once you get the color combination in the RGB you can then uh, slide the alpha you slide the alpha range to get transparency. I think this uh, this color is fine and now um, let us change the stroke for stroke go to this stroke paint tab and then repeat the same thing okay I think this looks all right maybe a little bit of tweaking and okay this looks fine now occasionally I would also suggest that you save your document because in, uh, because Inkscape crashes sometimes and I would not want to lose my progress here. Okay now uh, next thing I think we should work on the arrows. Let me zoom in a little. Now for the arrows uh, we'll be using the Bezier tool which can be used to draw curves as well as straight lines. Now uh, this for the start point I'll be getting a guide now in order to draw a guide on the screen, take your tool and then get to the ruler. And then from there you can drag a guide. Now for the starting point of the arrows, I think uh, here would be a great. And once done, you can see that the Bezier uh, tool snaps to the guide. So this will be helpful. Uh, also, I would suggest turning on uh, the snapping to path so that once we click the uh, click the first point and then go here as you can see we do not have any form of snapping so this will be tricky instead let me press escape to cancel this and then turn on snapping to paths get an appropriate location on the guide and then drag it to the shape and you can see that snapping is now on click where you want your curve to end and then press enter. Now I'm going to create four more of these. I think these are fine, but just in case, uh, like I don't like the placement of this one, I'd like to shift these a little bit above. So for customizations like that, you should select this edit uh, path nodes tool and then once you click on a path, it gives you these uh, um, endpoints, so you can modify the placement with these. And yeah, snapping is on, so that is quite helpful. This looks alright. Now let us work on the text. For that, I'll be using the text tool and as per the diagram i think this place should be great and i'll be typing x1 this is the first input now the default weight or what is installed is not really um in accordance with what the kind of figure that you want so i would suggest using computer modern font which is used in latex so for that you can either select it from here or um, other way better way would be to select the font 
so let's select the text and then go to the text menu go to text and font and here i already have installed the cmu classical sheriff which is i think ideal for our use case now we have x1 here and i'm going to turn the one into subscript now in order to change the font size you can either do it using the text tool you get it here or else you can simply click and then holding control you can resize okay this seems like an appropriate shape yeah great now for the other in order to be sure that i won't have to repeat the same uh, chore of uh, uh, selecting the font i'm going to duplicate it by pressing ctrl d and then using the arrow keys i bring it to the position where i want it Now I'll use the text tool to edit the subscripts. We are going to not add the missing middle inputs and simply you add dot to represent several of them. Okay, I think it is coming along very well. Now we will work on the weights. We can simply duplicate this place it at the correct location edit it using the text tool hmm. looks all right just a little bit of adjustment now i'll be duplicating these now to check the alignment yeah i think using guide will be very helpful okay uh, next thing uh, we should have a summation symbol here now to get that you can use tool like um, character map or oh it i think we should move these to the, towards the center okay that's better now to get the summation symbol you can either google it and then copy it here or else Another way is to go to extensions and go to render and then go to mathematics and then go to LaTeX. Now here I have already added this but in case you want any kind of symbol just remember to escape the brackets and then type the name of the LaTeX equivalent of the symbol and click apply. I think I have it somewhere yeah so it renders it somewhere in the somewhere in the document now for the font uh, let us let me first enlarge it okay so the next thing would be yeah uh, I would like to add the arrow that you see in the diagram so for that select the select these lines I'm going to do the change all at once once done um, open this this uh, fill and stroke tab and then you see we have the markers so for the markers um, this would signify the left end of the marker and this the right end now as you want the arrows on the right click here and then select the appropriate symbol i'll be using this one here it is Now you may notice that uh, they uh, get inside of the diagram. Okay, don't worry. We will um, we'll fix that because we will not be actually using these markers. Instead, we'll be using our custom markers that uh, you see in the diagram. So for now, um, let us keep this. And for the next thing, I'm going to create a block for the activation function. Let us select the square tool and before that let me get a guide here now you see that the color choice that we had for the circle is also being used here so um, so if so it is easy if you are working with a particular color scheme like in this case here We now need the sigma symbol here that is going to represent in any activation function.
I think it is the small sigma. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, finally, we are going to have another output here. I think I should uh, reduce the size a little bit. Looks too big. Now, finally, um, I'm going to create another arrow that leads up to here where we shall give the output label. Now, as we have the guide, we can, it will, this is going to help us uh, make a straight line here. And finally, let me just duplicate this. And yeah, so I think um, this is pretty good. Let me hide the guides now. But, uh, even then, I think um, we can reduce the thickness of these lines. So I'll be selecting all of these lines first. Go to the stroke menu and then we have uh, 0.26 to 65 into point 0.2 and we have thinner lines here same for these two mm, um, in order to export this yeah i'll be showing about the custom market thing but before that let us save it Control s and then export it now, if you save it it will be saved as an sbg file and uh, but uh, i would suggest if you are going to add it to a research paper or on overleaf or to text editor i would suggest exporting as a png image and then um, use drawing so that the entire part of the drawing there will be no padding but if you want you can select page selection or even a custom i usually use this drawing and i think by default the dpi would be at around 96 but uh, if you are working with research papers then i think a dpi of 300 is uh, very great so that um, it looks good if the paper is printed so once done just click on export and that's it now for making the custom markers so that our arrows look better but before that let me turn on the guides first uh, select the bezier tool and then draw something like a 1 in 20 degree angle using this tool okay so we have this and I'm now going to adjust the length. And try to make it symmetrical if you can. Okay, now that it is done, select one of the points on it and then shift drag to make it look like how the LaTeX arrow looks. Do the same on the other side. And when you are happy with how it looks, Okay, I think this is fine. But now you have to draw um, because of the uh, because of how markers are added. You have to add a midline here. Okay, this seems fine. Uh, also, note that uh, before adding it as a mark, the midline should be aligned properly with the horizontal axis. So let me get the guide here, and you can notice that this is not aligned well. So um, in order to make the this uh, entire arrow figure move along as a single unit, we have to we have to turn it into a group. So use the select tool and then select the entirety of it, and then either go to object and then group, or you can simply press Ctrl G. Okay, I think I made it aligned now. Once done, select the object and then click on objects to marker. The object will disappear from your canvas, but uh, if you come to the arrows and then select one, now go to markers and you see that your figure is added as a marker. Now, as you can see here, it did not align very well here. And this is probably because one side of it was longer. I think it is this side. So in order to go back to before you added this you can simply undo or control z and with enough control z's you get your shape back and you can modify it to make it work better so i think uh, the issue with this was that the side was longer i know this is quite a janky way of making it work but 
and this is what i found uh, to make it uh, work but um, in case if someone knows a better way to get the latex arrow i'd be happy to hear okay i think so let me group it and for ungroup you can use ctrl shift g and then ctrl g to group and then uh, the same thing go to object and then objects to marker okay now although this is not perfect but kind of kind of works and i think if you are unzoomed then it would look fine here it is but uh, notice uh, this perturbs inside the figure so to fix that we have to go to the edit node tool and then move it okay i think this would look great yeah maybe we can actually push it a little bit okay yeah looks fine now i'm going to change all of the arrows with this but uh, you can either use default one or you can make a custom marker for yourself okay i think yeah this is it so this is our figure let me hide the guides yeah I know the arrowhead look kind of weird, but you can make them better if you create your own custom marker. Okay, one last thing I think we can add are labels, header labels. So let us try that. I'm going to duplicate this, move it up, and change the text to inputs. And the font looks fine, but uh, the size, the font family is fine, but the size. I'm going to reduce it. Okay, I think mm, this is great. Okay. This is an update to the previous part that I created. In this segment, I found a better way of making custom marker and we'll be looking into that. First, I'm going to zoom into the canvas and use the Bezier tool to draw only one segment of the arrow. Once it is done, I'm going to shift drag, select the edit node tool and then shift drag to get the required shape. This seems fine. And once uh, you have the required curve, you only need to select the object, duplicate it and then go to object, flip vertical. So the duplicate has been flipped and by uh, using the arrow keys, you can drag the object so that they meet at a at one point we need the midline so for that i'll be using a guide the guide is snapped and now i can i only need to draw the midline and with that done i only need to select it group it and then uh, turn it into a marker okay let's try this one out this is our old marker And this is the one that we prepared. So as you can see, it looks much better. I'm now going to replace the others. And in the SBZ file that I'm going to share in the description, I'll be sharing it with these arrows.